to C.J. Wiley with more adventures on the road. I'm uh, touring through Louisiana right now, thinking about playing a tournament in uh, Shreveport. There's three tournaments coming up, and uh, last time I played in three in a row, I did pretty well. I got uh, second in Tulsa, Roberto Gomez beat me. Second in Knoxville, Tony Shohan beat me. I got uh, ninth at the Scotty Townsend, uh, John Mora was the one that put me out there, so I'm, uh, you know, in the mood to play, and I'm also in the process of writing this book about the mental game of pool, and uh, I wanted to reach out to real players like yourself that have followed my, uh, you know, my story, and see what you would like to see in that book, because what I'm discovering is I have a lot of information and a lot of different uh, angles to the mental game, so I want to condense it down, because I want this book to be, you know, around 100 pages, and if I wrote everything that I've experienced down, it would probably be 300 pages, and, uh, you know, if you get too much, it's just like when you're given lessons, I have kind of a uh, safety valve that I have to use, because if I give someone too much information at once, it's detrimental, and uh, they might not remember any of it, so... You know, I have a real strict regimen where I teach from the, the foundation up, like you're building a building, and make sure everyone uh, has that solid foundation so they can continue to build their game and uh, reach their highest potential, uh, you know, for the rest of their uh, their years. You can play this game uh, until you're in your mid-70s at a high level. I know... Joe Blackburn in uh, Bristol, Tennessee's 83, I think, and still runs out consistently. So uh, that's the great thing about pocket billiards is uh, it's, uh, you know, one activity that's mentally and physically stimulating that can be played, you know, long past when you could play tennis or uh, pickleball or, you know, even golf, you know, takes... Uh, a lot of stress on your body and your back. The way that I teach uh, shows a way to go down on the ball where it doesn't put pressure on your neck and your back and you can get centered on the shot line and, and go down uh, the same every time and it, it, it really is a natural way to do it because it makes your neck go straight back which is good for you and, it, and your hips go back and you know a lot of people uh, when they get older the hips and the neck is what they uh, have trouble with. They say, you know, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you don't consistently stimulate, uh, you know, your neck, your hips, your, you know, your knees to a certain extent, you want to keep uh, circulation and keep them, uh, you know, keep them moving. It's really important. So this mental game book, uh, I have a whole lot of resources. You know, one of the things that I studied when I was in my early 20s was uh, neuro-linguistic programming. I was studying, uh, you know, linguistics was a uh, passion of mine. I wanted to learn to have better communication skills and, and better listening skills because that's a uh, kind of a common denominator, especially getting into the big businesses that I was in because I did the marketing and advertising for uh, CJ's Billiard Palace and Carson's Palace, which uh, was number one in the state of Texas. And CJ's was probably the number one pool room in the country for a while, especially considering the action that was there. We had 42 pool tables, 24 hours a day. My best year, I did almost a half a million in uh, pool time alone. So it was uh, pretty lucrative. And uh, But I you know, went through that time of my life and, and really didn't want to, uh, to pursue that anymore. You know, I like to do things until I feel like I've mastered them or come as close as I can, and then I generally move on to something else, other um, challenges. So I was interviewed in a, uh, by a sports writer, Mike Geffner, in New York City, and he wrote some major articles on me. And he asked me what I aspired to do, and I said I wanted to be the number one player in the world. He said, then what? And I said, I'll probably quit. <laughs> he said, really? I said, yeah. I said, I want to get to the top of the mountain, but I don't want to live there. I 
mean, I respect Shane Van Boning and guys like that who have stayed at the top for so many years because uh, that takes a lot of dedication. I just had way more interests in life than just pool. Uh, pocket billiards is more of a like a serious hobby for me, and, and it's uh, created revenue that's allowed me to do and study uh, other things and travel a lot. One of the places that I learned things that I'll pass on is in Hawaii. I used to go to Hawaii uh, quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I was married in Hawaii uh, on the island of uh, Kauai, where Fantasy Island was filmed, and uh, I got married at uh, the northeast side of Kauai, uh, Princeville. It's by Princeville. There's a golf course there that's really cool, and a big uh, hotel, and we were married in a uh, like a private sanctuary there. It was really cool. So, uh, when we were there, we took a eight-day extensive course on the on the Huna, the Kahuna Indians, or the natives of Hawaii, and they were very spiritual people and had a lot of techniques that were very advanced. It looks to me like they had kind of a combination of uh, different philosophies from all over the world, which it's kind of odd because, you know, Hawaii's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you know. But I think at one time the world was a lot more connected than it is now. And you can tell by the architecture all over the world. It's very similar, very Romanesque. They call it Tartarian, like our state capitals in Washington, D.C. And there's uh, lots of um, those type buildings that, you know, now they call them cathedrals and federal buildings and universities, and, but I don't think that's uh, how they started out. So in Hawaii, I took a class with uh, Tad James, who did what's called the Huna training. And my best friend at the time, John Emmerich, uh, worked with him, and he was kind of my aspiration to get into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. He was still this day one of the smartest people that I've ever met. Definitely, probably, I don't even know what his IQ is. It's, it's incredibly high. When he was 17, he told me there isn't a mathematical problem he couldn't solve. And if it couldn't be solved, he can tell you in less than five minutes to prove he's not a servant. And uh, he was pretty literal with that. <laughs> he ended up doing really well in business and actually lives in Hawaii now. He's a multi, 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 multi millionaire, uh, probably close to a hundred, but very modest. And uh, you know, you would never know that he was that wealthy. He's uh, not one to uh, you know show off, or and he's really not going to spend that kind of money. Even though he's got a beautiful house and two kids and a wife in uh, Hawaii, right? Uh, it's crossed from, uh, or down from the, the zoo in Honolulu. He, own, he actually owns a hotel across the street from the zoo that's about, uh, I don't know, six or seven stories, but pretty nice hotel, and he fixed it up nice. And uh, it's nice to say you own a hotel in Hawaii. <laughs> and uh, so he got me into NLP and also this Huna training. He also wrote a book called Be the Person You Want to Be. I think he did <laughs> so and really had a great influence on me so the Huna uh, was very interesting I won't get into the details of that but I will tell you one thing that we did that had a big influence on my life so when we were out there John told me about this kind of this mystical place called Jump Rock and it's a uh, place you know, that has a big rock that you can jump off of into the ocean. And it's supposed to have some mystical uh, uh, characteristics. And uh, one of them is that if you, like, make a wish, it will come true. And I honestly don't really believe that. But um, I did think it would be cool to jump into the... Uh, know to that uh, ocean and the first day that we went there I actually uh, didn't jump 
John and my ex-wife did. And the reason was, more than anything, it was a real calm day and the, uh, the uh, ocean was, was still. And I had a fear when I was young about diving off a high uh, diving board. So, I mean, I've got kind of a, you know, from my childhood, a little bit of a, a fear of, uh, you know, jumping off a bridge or, or somewhere real high. And it got on my mind and I just couldn't do it. But the next day, it, the waves were crashing against the, uh, the shore and, and it was turbulent. And John and my wife at the time, they couldn't do it, but I could that day. And that's kind of a story of my life. You know, I like, uh, I like turbulence. <laughs> I'm a really good person to have on your side in a uh, emergency situation, but, but maybe not so good when everything's going well. So uh, I like continuing to push myself into higher levels because that's when I perform at my best. So what we did was a technique in uh, that Huna where it's called a faith fall. And what you do in the classroom situation is people would stand up like on a, on the, on a chair and, uh, and everybody would get behind them and then they would just fall backwards um, with the faith that people would catch them, <laughs> which we did. So it wasn't dangerous at all. But the whole thing is when you fall like that, you know, and, and just let yourself go backwards, your subconscious is, uh, it like drops its guard. So anything that, that you would hear or, or think or, or anything like that during that particular time would get through your subconscious blockages and, uh, you know, would be, car be, car be part of your reality. Or at least uh, that's the thought. So what I did was I connected a goal that I had, which was really at the time not even possible. I wanted to win the biggest tournament, the most money, the most ESPN time you know, the, uh, the most recognition, you know, I just made it like as big and, and far out as I could, you know? And like I said, at the time that I did this, it wouldn't have been possible because there was a controversy with the men's professional, uh, pool association and they were getting camel cigarettes as a sponsor. So we wouldn't be able to play on ESPN. And that's really, the main reason I like to play uh, the last few years is, you know, I wanted to play the TV events. That was uh, the biggest challenge. I had plenty of other things to do. I didn't need to play in, you know, a lot of pool tournaments, but I did like to play in the ones that uh, would get, get on ESPN, and I ended up playing 23 ESPN matches, and I think I won 21 of them. So, uh, or maybe 20 if you count. Uh, we had a, a, a mixed doubles one that I played with a, a cheerleader that, that I ended up losing, but that was more for fun. But I won the uh, ESPN World Championships, the doubles championships with Lori John uh, Jones at the time. I think it's Brown now. Uh, Lori John is a great partner, and I've known her since she was a teenager. We met in Chicago at the National High School Championships, and she was already a top pro. And I won the National High School Championships and uh, ended up getting third in the mini tournament. Earl Strickland beat me when I was, uh, I think I was 18. So we won the doubles, and then I played a battle of the sexes uh, against Vivian Vivarreal, who had won the world champion women's side, and uh, we played for 60,000 first, 40,000 second. So that week I won 88,000, and, um, you know, every event I every event I was in. And so, so every match was televised. So I got the most ESPN exposure of all time during that tournament. I won the most money at that tournament. I got the, the, the most exposure, everything that I had listed on my uh, goal setting list for this faithful, I achieved within three months and lots of things had to happen that was out of my control to enable that to happen. I mean, it was, it was uncanny. So all we did was we, we took those goals and then anchored it to a word. And there's a process that I'll talk about in detail uh, in the book, probably, um, 
of what that process is and how to anchor it. And the word that I used was confidence. So basically, we took that goal, anchored it to the word confidence, and then when I jumped off of Jump Rock, uh, my friends yelled, confidence! And like I said, when you're in that state, your subconscious is completely uh, dropped. Like anytime, if you've, if you've actually fell before, you know what I mean. When you fall, it's like time stops and, and uh, you're real programmable at the time. And people that uh, understand this and understand mind control uh, will put you in those situations. So you got to watch when people are trying to get you in an emotional state that's when you're more easily programmed. So, uh, you know, if somebody is, is trying to elicit fear in you or confusion or anything like that, you got to really watch what their intention may be because uh, from my experience, it's usually not good. You know, I would not try to uh, confuse anybody or, or put fear into them uh, because I know that's kind of a dark way of programming people so that's why I don't watch the news <laughs> that's what they're doing all the time so anyway um, that's one of the techniques I use that 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 was super strong and uh, you know to in, to win that tournament and, and achieve everything on that list was um, quite honestly it was it was a little scary I, I I thought about doing it again, and I did it in, you know, smaller scales to, to reach where I did in the business world. But there was a point when uh, I think you got to be careful about having the ability to achieve whatever your goals are, because we can't see the future. And sometimes, you know, like if you wish to have a million dollars next week, uh, yeah, if you got the million dollars, you, you might be surprised how much that would hurt your life. I've been in situations where I was a multimillionaire and uh, had powerful positions with other people where they they knew that, you know, I could influence their life in a positive way. And I, I quite honestly didn't know who my true friends were. And when that chapter of my life was over, I found out I didn't have many. <laughs> that most of them just went on to the next place that uh, they may be able to to get something off somebody. But I, I would rather um, be more genuine. You know, my goal in life isn't to make a, a lot of money. I've done that. Uh, my goal is to help other people and, and, and try to, uh, you know, create a legacy that is uh, positive and, and actually have a positive influence on as many people as I can. Because at this point in my life, the only way I can help myself is to help other people. So that's what this book is about, and that's why I'm asking you to uh, write down some questions, comments. Uh, you know, uh, when at, you know, in doing this, it's helping me understand what people really want to learn these days. So that the book isn't 300 pages, and the uh, you know, if it's 100 pages, all of them are quality and, and have to do with things that, that I think you'll, you'll like and enjoy. So if you will do that, and if you like my videos, uh, please like, share, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already. And uh, share this with other people. You know, I've got a lot of videos that I've done in the past uh, five or six months that, that are getting great reviews and helping a lot of people. I have a lot of testimonials, especially my centering videos and the, you know, how to go down on the ball like a champion player all the time. Uh, that's really strong when you build that foundation. So anyway, I uh, just asking you to, to help me a little bit in this spot and, and uh, I'll return the favor. Until next time, this is CJ. I'll talk with you soon.